Servus Freunde, my name is Jimmy Cage and Kumati is a 1979 Malayalam language fantasy drama family movie that was written and directed by Govindan Aravindan. He was an important figure in India's parallel cinema movement and while I only have seen this one movie of his, it's very striking how different it is in terms of storytelling. It does tell a story, but it does so in a very reduced, calm and kind of impressionistic way. It's a mythical tale about its titular character Kumati, who is this mysterious stranger that comes to the small village where he somewhat casts a spell on these little children. The movie has been recommended to me and I was very intrigued when I found out that it was picked by the Film Foundation's World Cinema Project, a program created by Martin Scorsese, to be restored to its original glory. There's a fine looking version available on YouTube, which I watched on the train ride on my latest trip to visit my family in Germany. Of course, it would have been better to watch it on a big screen in a room that's pitch black, but I always very much enjoy to watch two or three movies on my train rides. And this one was just beautiful. Besides the restoration info, I basically knew nothing about the film or its story beforehand. And since the character of Kumati stems from folklore from the Kerala region, I could have been very lost with it. Yet I wasn't, because the tale of Kumati isn't so different from that of the German legend Der Rattenfänger von Hameln, the Pied Piper of Hamelin. It's about this mysterious older man who appears one day and who attracts the attention of all the children in a village. The actual story of the movie is quite small and could be told in just two or three sentences. It's a very slow paced film and it also contains only very little dialogue. That's why I said it felt rather impressionistic to me. There's a certain charming simplicity to the movie, a certain grace and beauty. It's a movie about childhood and we do find the closest thing to a protagonist in the small boy. And the very calm and naturalistic presentation and approach certainly reminded me of Satyajit Ray's debut film Pata Panchali. It too has this careful eye and focus on childhood on one hand and people of very old age on the other. For roughly 90 minutes, filmmaker Govindan Aravindan lets us become a spectator, a witness, an observer of this little tale, without presenting a very clear-cut narrative. It only emerges slowly from the images and sounds. And I have to say that Kumati must be one of the most beautiful films I can think of. The cinematography was done by Shaji and Karun, and when I have said many times in the past how wonderful it is to see the beautiful countryside of Kerala in these Malayala movies, this one earns a special spot. Kumati moves like this beautiful flowing river of gorgeous shots of nature and the people that live in it. The compositions are marvelous and it's especially the rich color palette that catches one's eye. It is both naturalistic and magical at the same time. There are also quite a few song sequences, but the music and songs always seem to stem from the world itself, with the children, as well as Kumati of course, singing and dancing their songs. The music was composed by M.G. Radhakrishnan and Kavalam Narayana Panika and there's a certain magnetic or enchanting element to it, which I guess is why the movie reminded me of The Pied Piper. But since I wasn't familiar with the character of Kumati at all, it was a bit hard to get fully engaged in the story. Like I told you before, I didn't feel lost, but I had a rather difficult time to figure out if there's a strong message to the story and if so, how much it is maybe a bit lost on me. An element that stuck out to me was the theme of freedom. There are several shots throughout the movie that show us a little caged bird. And it is the very last shots that bring us back to it and show us that our child protagonist has learned a lesson. It was fascinating how Kumati tells its story with almost no dialogue, but this very enchanting beautiful imagery and soundscape. But I would lie if I said that it didn't sometimes feel almost painfully slow for me and more like a short story than material for an entire feature length film. It also didn't really engage me that much in an emotional way. I cherished the strong atmosphere, simplicity and beautiful setting and camera work, but it wasn't that I was really super engaged in what was going on. But then again, it certainly wasn't the best option to watch this on a train. But even then, it did cast a certain spell on me. So in German I'd say, Govindan Aravindans Kumati ist einer der visuell schönsten und beeindruckendsten Filme, die ich je gesehen habe. Eine sehr kleine Geschichte, aber eine unglaublich magisch-poetische Kinosprache. I give Kumati 7 out of 10. It's more like 7.4, but I don't do that. Alright, that's it like always. Comment below and let me know what you think about Kumati. And also, are you familiar with the work of Guvandin Aravindan? What is your favorite film of his? You can hit me up on Twitter, Instagram and Letterboxd and also on Patreon simply at The Jimmy Cage. And if you enjoyed this episode, please give me a thumbs up, share, subscribe, whatever you like. And make sure you hit that bell 
for all I have to tell. Mm -hmm.